Do you know how to leverage this JIRA feature for optimal project management? Join us in this detailed tutorial from our expert trainer who walks you through each step. Let's get started. Welcome to this section looking at JIRA's administrative backend. As you might expect, you'll need global JIRA administrator permissions for everything in this section. And we'll start in this video with understanding how users in JIRA work. Inside of JIRA, you can have as many users as you want. What you pay for are users who have access to Atlassian products. Jira is an Atlassian product. We've seen a lot of other Atlassian products throughout this course too. Bitbucket, Confluence, the Compass Components, and a ton of other apps that are outside the scope of what we're learning about today in Jira. But it's an important distinction to understand between users and users with product access. Because let's say you have someone on your team who leaves. Well, you can revoke their user access, but still keep the user account around. So all the issues, comments, and so on that they created, all that history stays inside of Jira. Speaking of, let's head into Jira because where we control the users is actually not inside of Jira. To get there, we can come up to the settings gear and down at the bottom, we'll come into user management under Atlassian admin. And this takes us to Atlassian administration. It's outside of Jira, Confluence, or any other Atlassian product you might have. Think of this a lot like Atlassian Home that we've seen here and there throughout the course. So here you can see what I mean by active users compared to total users. And if we look at one of these users, say if we open up Sophia, we can see she has access to Jira. That is the only product that she has access to. But if we come back to another user, Say, this is my research account here, so we can see this account has access to both Jira and Confluence. So the active users for these products are the ones affecting our billing. And that leads right into adding new users with product access because that will affect our bill. So up here at the top right, we can see that we have eight requests to approve. Now, earlier in this course, when we were logged in as Valerie, we saw what it was like for her to invite someone else to our JIRA account. So this is the other side of that, where we can come in and see anyone who has requested access. That includes users who invite others, like Valerie inviting somebody else, or as we can see, I have to blur out the contact info on here because there are other students taking this course who have requested access. But as we just learned, that will directly affect my bill, and that's not something included with this course, <laughs> sorry. As a JIRA administrator, though, you'll also get an email notification if a user requests someone else get added. But this is where you're going to go to manage it all. So it's a good idea to keep tabs on this area here. So let's hop back to our users. And let's walk through the process of inviting a new user from both sides. So as a JIRA administrator, you can see the whole process. So I'm going to come up here and invite users. And now we want to enter in their email address. So let's type in her email. This is Nella Taskwell that we'll add in. There we go. And then we choose what products we want them to have access to. So let's just give her access to Jira as a user. We can personalize this email invitation if we want. Um, it will have a default inside of Jira. If we don't, go ahead and click on invite user. And then we can log in. Let's log in as Nella in Nella's email here, and we can see that email come through. There we go. So if we open this up, we can accept the invitation, and then that's gonna go through the process of Nella setting up her account, and then she will have access to Jira. So let's say, this is her name, create password, go ahead and click on continue, and there we go. So now she is inside of Jira and ready to start working with our team. Now, before we wrap up this video, I do want to point out the ability to group users together, but also that Jira is automatically using groups to control how users get access to different products. So if we come over to groups here, we can see there are some of these that are by default. So for example, Jira software users. If we come in here and look at the details of this, we can see all the different users that have either active access or have had access in the past inside of this group. So if we were to give them product access, this would be the permissions that they have. 
So in this case, the Jira software users is a default that Jira adds to give them access to browsing around inside of Jira. So groups are a really handy way of being able to set up some of those permissions that's a little bit separate from the access. So if we remove the product access and then want to give that back, they will retain those permissions as long as they're in those groups. For example, we can see here that anyone in the administrator's group will have administrative permissions for the Atlassian products I have on my license. So obviously, how your users and groups need to be set up are going to be unique to your organization. Don't let your momentum stop here. Check out our recommended playlist for more helpful videos to boost your skills. Visit the Simon Says It channel. Explore our videos and training sessions and decide what you want to learn next.